Although continued global warming will affect everywhere on the planet, from modern cities to island villages, most greenhouse gases are produced by the industrialized countries of the world. Why are industrialized countries more responsible for global warming? We use cars, trucks, buses, trains, and they all, it, it all affects the environment. Well, assuming that there is such a thing as global warming, then yeah, I guess industrialized countries would be more responsible as they release more of the gases, more of the chemicals that cause said global warming. If we're using more oil, how is that not worse than somebody that's using less oil? We have trade and stuff and a lot of things we produce from like factories and things like that other countries use. So even though they're not the ones producing it, they still sort of benefit from it. I mean, we, we use them even when we don't really need to. I mean, when we have to walk like to I mean, one block, we'll take a car and it, you know, it's a waste. Of course, there's pollution all over, in our waters, uh, on the land, in the air. So that has a lot of effect on uh, all the animals and wildlife that we depend on up here. Uh, uh, I'm sure it comes from, it's not coming from here, it's coming from somewhere else. Uh, big cities, uh, possibly maybe factories and uh, a lot of other things that happened years ago which is uh, uh, causing it to occur now the way i see it to the emissions of the greenhouse gases, but the most important ones are the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas, which powers our society. More than three quarters of the energy that humans produce and use comes from the burning of fossil fuels, and this produces carbon dioxide. Now, the reason for that is the fossil fuels themselves originate in plants that took carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere long ago, millions of years ago, and were buried deep underground. Now the human beings are pulling up in the space of two or three hundred years, millions of years of carbon sediments, and we're turning them into carbon dioxide, and that is going to have a profound effect on the climate. So every time you turn on the switch to make a refrigerator run or an electric light bulb turn on, at the power plant end of the wires, usually carbon dioxide is produced. So this is very fundamental to almost all our activities, heating homes, running factories, you name it, carbon dioxide is basically involved in the equation somewhere. Okay. This is a nice 16, 17 pound turkey. And um, to cook it without any stuffing would take maybe two hours. But I'm gonna put all this stuffing in it and then it's gonna take three hours. And the reason is that uh, instead of just having this shell, this uh, thin shell of meat, you've got all this other stuff on the inside that has to be heated up. And that's a lot like the earth with regard to global warming. The atmosphere is a very thin shell. And actually, if all we had, if the whole story was the greenhouse effect, the atmosphere would heat up very quickly, almost uh, immediately, essentially, in response to the buildup of gases. But that's not what happens. Um, because the oceans act a lot like the stuffing, they kind of are this huge additional mass 
which the shell, the thin shell of the atmosphere is in contact, in contact with, there's a lag, an inertia. The heating corresponding to the buildup can drag out 30, 40, 50 years or longer. The second consequence is that when you finally are able to start limiting the amounts of the gases in the atmosphere, there's a, law, a, le, a long lag between the actions you might take in terms of limiting emissions and the effect on temperature. You have to think decades and centuries even in advance, but it's starting to become apparent to most scientists that if we don't act soon, there's a, an increasing risk that something will go seriously awry. It's only when we put in the realistic increase in the greenhouse gases that we have observed that we can then do an accurate simulation of the temperature warming, of the warming that we've had so far. And this is one of the major reasons why the scientists are bringing forward the issue that global warming is real, because in our scientific understanding, we cannot explain what we see unless we put in those gases. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. The other ones are lagging as usual. Hi, how are you? No, no, no. We used to live in Soho for many years. No, no. You publish both articles in in yeah, on both the monthly internet. updates, right? So if you're interesting weather events that are happening around the world, right. droughts here or right. or you know big storms there or El Nino or whatever is happening with the coral reef somewhere or something like that, I will throw that in. So, yeah, because I have the and the That's a good idea. Why don't you put them on top of the plate? Michael and I were saying on Friday afternoon that for us, it's, and I'm sure for you too, that it's been something that we've been talking about for a long time, projecting into the, you know, at the end of the 21st century, to have it be happening so visibly, so concretely already with, with beginning to have these downstream effects is actually quite amazing, I think, for, for us who have been working in the, in the area for a long time. Well, it's a weird mixture, both very disturbing and gratifying at the same time. You know, it's very scary. It's very scary because, you know, whatever is happening now to us is going to be, you know, 10 times, 100 times worse for our kids. So I just feel sometimes outraged and upset for their sake, if not for my own sake, that, you know, we're giving them this, this horrible legacy that they're going to have to deal with one way or another. That's right, I remember that. There's some crazy... Thank <laughs> you.